Hello my crafty friends, Corinne here from Corinne's Crafts. I hope you are well. I hope you're getting lots of crafting done. Please do share with me what you are crafting. Please don't forget to comment on my video. Um, I have today channeled my inner clean and simple for my card. Here is my card. Oh wow, a little bit of scoring. We've got two snowflakes. We've done some enameling with our in, um, embossing powders. A simple sentiment, a couple of gems and that is all it needs. Absolutely beautiful. Something really, really different. Um, I hope you like it. You can see a proper picture, hopefully at the start and at the end. And, uh, and if you like that, please watch the video and I'll show you how it's made. I am absolutely loving putting all of these Christmas cards together. And I'm also loving trying to create different looks. So for today's card i've started with a piece of card five and a quarter by five and a quarter so a nice little square piece and it's just multi-purpose card nothing fancy at all got bits on the table and i've just marked in three quarters um three sides of the i've marked in one centimeter from the back and then i'm going to take my scoreboard and i'm actually going to use my centimeter side for once something i don't do very often if any size scoreboard will work and what i want to do is i want to put some score lines on and i want them to be top and down the left hand side so i'm going to pop this onto here and i'm going to line this up with the one centimeter mark and the reason for doing this is i don't want the score line to go right to the end i want it to stop one centimeter from the end so i'm going to score down like that and i know that's one centimeter don't, i'm i'm not worried about my lines being perfectly um my markers they're just roughly just to give me a, a point i'm going to turn it round and i'm going to do the other one so i can just come in at the one centimeter mark i'm using the scoreboard rather than my marks but my marks are just telling me where to stop and i'm coming down to there as well so i've done if i turn it over i've done a single score line around there i'm going to bring it back in and I'm going to go, so I've done one centimetre. I'm going to come down at one and a half. I'm going to just come in a little bit and I'm going to come down again. Down to that one centimetre mark again. Just to there. Turn it round. I'm going to come at one and a half centimetres again, starting level with that. And then I'm going to run it down to there. Well, that was not a bad guess. Now, I wanted to show you, if you go a little bit too far with your line, so I'm just going to put a little bit of a line there. So when you turn it over, I've got a mark just there. All you need to do is put it on, get a larger ball tool and just rub it back into the groove and it will rub out any, over, any marks you put on too far. And that's my card. So all I've got is I've got some nice score lines, a bit like you've got an embossing folder. And actually, I'm going to just rub out a little bit up there because that wasn't being very square. There we go. Let me have a look. Oh, that's much neater. So you just put it on the scoreboard and just give it a little bit of a rub. So there we go. So that's all I'm going to do for now to the top of my card. I'm going to put that on my base. Now, there was a couple of reasons for starting at five and a quarter. And that is so that I could bring in a pre-made, you know, ready-bought six-inch card base. And onto there, I'm going to put some silver. Now, this is out of Crafters Companion. Um... Luxury card, so it's the ice blue, so that means that the glitter card isn't pure silver. It's actually got, oh, put that back. It's got a hint of blue to it. Can you see? It's got some blue hints to it. So I'm going to stick that onto my card base, just like that, just there, and that's going to go on like that. So that is about five and a half inches you can see you've then got your card base so this one is somewhere between five and a quarter and five and a half so it's just because you know i go up in eighths of an inch so i'm going to pop that on too there we go pop that on and i'm going to pop that onto there and then I'm going to find my pressure tool and I'm just, I know it's a stamping pressure tool, but it's absolutely brilliant for smooching out that glue. Look, I can see it just sneaking out there. There we go. Where's my cloth? I'll just grab a cloth because I can see some of that glue oozing. It just pushes it right to the very edges. Some people use a brayer. I like also to use a brayer, but 
that works really well. So then I need to put this one on. And I'm going to put that on there. But I'm actually going to put it on with a little bit of tape. And now I want to put this on my card. And remember, I wanted the score lines top and left. So those can go on just there. Just like that. I mean, that extra white layer, it just adds a little bit of interest. That's all it does. OK, so I'm going to pop that to one side to dry. So let me just pop that to the side and hopefully I don't forget where I put it. Next, I'm going to bring out my snowflakes. Now, these seems to be one my go to set this year. They seem to be the ones I'm really enjoying. But what I wanted was I wanted two different snowflake dies and I wanted reasonably sized dies. Got a hole in there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to die cut them out of cardstock. So this one, the larger one, has been die cut out of just a regular multi-purpose card. And this one I've actually um, die cut it out of watercolour card, just a scrap of watercolour card that I had. Now I'm not going to do anything whatsoever with this one. This one is how it's going to look. It's going to stay just like that. So I'm going to move that out of the way. But we're going to work on this one. So I'm going to bring in a scrap of card, paper, whatever you've got. And then I'm going to go all over this with my Versamark ink pad. So this is, um, it's the Versamark, so it's the clear. Um, it just makes it super sticky, so you can then add anything you want to do. And actually, while I've been prepping this, I think, why didn't I get my little pancake maker out? That would have been a really sensible thing to do. I could have done what I'm trying to do in half the time but i haven't so i'm going to just carry on as we are so i've got some embossing powders i've got a few here now i've also got a little this is just a little craft spoon and actually i gave away a couple of these in um my giveaway today that i was doing i just sent off some cards so yeah people that get those will find a little spoon in there i think a gold one in one and a silver one in the other if you're wondering what they're for, they're for glitters and embossing powders and things like that, just to sprinkle on nice and easily. So pop a little bit of that on there and then I'm going to just tip that off. Now, it tends to tip an X too much off of the blue at first, but don't worry, we're going to come back in. Because it's a multicoloured one, it doesn't stick as well as I would hope on that first bit, but do not worry. So I'm then going to come in with my green. And I'm going to put some green on. You'll see the difference in the different um, types of embossing powders as I put this on. So let's put that. What I could do is I could just try and leave it like that and hope it didn't blow away. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to take too much off. Back. So I've got a nice little puddle there. That'll work really well. Where's my silver one gone? Up here. Let's take that one. This is a, what I'd call multi stage you're going to do a few different stages to this to get this to where you want it to be so don't worry about getting it perfect first time because i'm going to pop plenty on so i'm just going to lift that up let's get that that silver might be a bit oh ah it took too much off because it's stuck over the blue okay Put a bit more there. Don't worry if it doesn't stick too well. Like I said, we're going to sort. We're going to do multiple layers, and the more layers we go, the stickier it gets, and the easier it is to get it to stick. Just a process. So we can lift this up, and then my final one is my gold. So let's put a bit of gold on, and again, you'll see this will stick. Probably a lot better just because of the type of embossing powder it is. Just putting bits on. Where do I want this next little bit? Actually, I'm going to do it there. I've got quite a nice mix. Let's just lift that up. Oh, I've dropped that, so now that silver's gone a bit further than I want it, but never mind. And then that can go back in there. I'm not going to put the lids on my embossing powder, so I've got this on here. I'm actually just going to get a little bit more of the blue and just put it, just sprinkle it over. 
try not to get it going through. Let's do the same with the green, keeping it nice and light. So I'm not wasting much, not going back in the pot. You get loads of embossing powders in your pot, so it really doesn't matter too much. Okay. And that spoon is really useful for controlling it. So now I've got that, I'm going to get my heat gun. I'm just going to warm up my heat gun because I, I want to do this all on a low heat. So I should just do that and then I'll show you how it heats up. Right, I don't know if you could see that because on the fast forward. So what I did was as it was heating, I actually sprinkled some extra um, embossing powders on. Now you can see the difference if I bring it up. Where it was a solid colour, look, it's gone really nice and solid. Where, oh, it's quite warm, is this? Where it was the glittery one is a bit patchy still, but that's not a problem because we can solve that. So I'm going to turn this back over. I'm just giving this a minute to cool down and to harden because some of that's a bit soft. Um, but it's not soft enough to do this without doing warming it up so that's dry now i'm going to get my ink pad and i'm going to go over it again just all over and actually it's the ink pad sticks really well where you've already got one layer there we, are. we are going to be doing some more um versamark on it as well turn that back over let's just go in with a little bit more the silver's not bad it's the blue just needed a bit more Hopefully that'll be sticking a bit better this time. And actually I'm going to put a, oh, that's green. Put a bit more green just here. It, you know, you can meld them in together. It looks quite nice when you sort of, sort of verdigree them. That will look really, really good. Put that. Um, do I need, let's put a little bit more silver just here. A little bit just there. Oh, that's working really well a little bit just there there we go let's just pick that up i think that will probably do once i've done that one so let's go on there again keeping my heat gun low at the first time i turned it on i had it on far too fast let's go really slow you can go from behind if you can get it but i'm keeping it a distance and keeping it making sure my heat gun is hot oh yeah a lot of that's just blowing so I can just go nice and slowly, but you need it really, really hot. And can you see it changing? Look, absolutely amazing. I can see that cast, I can see the shadow going as it changes over that way. It's an amazing process to watch. That's much better. Let me just really try and heat this up now. Now all the loose bits, I can actually turn it up a little bit. And what I want to do now is I want to just to leave that to go cold for a minute. So I'm just going to put my lids on while that just cools down for a minute. Because while it's hot, I could end up... You could actually... Go, you could put... You could do like wax seals and put indents in there. If you've got like a wax seal um, of a snowflake, you could put that and That would look nice, wouldn't it? I didn't think of that. Impress... Do an impression in there with a wax seal. Oh, I like that idea. Right. Let's see. Oh, no. I've just pulled a little bit off. That's still wet but we can work that in a minute so once that's dry let me give that a minute i'm just going to give it a waft right that is dry so i'm going to come back in with my versamark ink pad again one last time final time all over and then i'm going to turn it back over last time and this time i'm going in with my ultra thick embossing powder i don't know if you've ever used this look at this difference in the grain sizes it reminds me it's almost like a washing powdery grain it's really thick it's like salt um all over pick that up and now you can see look it looks like crystals all over so let's put that down okay i am going to put this back onto my card 
And again, this is another one where you might want to heat from behind. Let me see if I can show you how you heat from behind. So turn it on nice and slow, lift it up and just heat from behind. And that will stop the crystals from blowing away. Just as they start to turn, you can then come from the front again. Once they've started to melt, I can see those, there we go, they're melting now. I can turn it back around the other side. They're not gonna blow away once they've started to melt on. So again, keep it nice and low to begin with. And then that'll work really, really well. There we go. And what we're doing now is we're getting a really nice enamel finish on there. So you can just work it. And hopefully you don't get a white spot in the middle like I've got. There we go. All over. And that gives you a gorgeous, hot, enamelled snowflake. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? Ooh, that is rather warm. Rather warm. Okay, now that was warm. So I've got one here that is all dried. So I'm going to use that one. Okay, so this is, the, as I said, is the one we're going to be using. So I'm going to bring my card back in. This is going to be, I think, about as clean and simple as I get. So we've got our first snowflake and we've got our second snowflake and that is all we're going to put on the card so i'm going to get my first snowflake i'm going to turn it over and i'm just going to put a few foam pads behind you could be using anything you want you can put this on flat with glue you can be doing it anyway it's entirely up to you how you do this so put that onto there oops don't pull them back straight back off like i just did oh i've definitely pulled that one off come on foam pad back on there we go There we are. Right. So this is going to go. Now you could go smack bang in the middle, but we're not. We're going to come to the side and I'm going to try and do it at a nice angle. So it's sort of, let's just go a little bit off in two places so it looks like it was meant to. So that's all we're going to do on there. Now I have got my glue gun hot. Now this one is starting to curl a little bit. If I push, it's going to crack. If What you can do is warm it slightly, but I'm quite liking that it's got a bit of curl on. So all I'm going to do here is I've got my oops, nice and warm hot glue gun. I just need a new glue stick and I'm going to pop a little bit of hot glue on the back. Now the reason I'm doing hot glue is because I find that when I have emboss something like this the back does tend to get a little bit coated and a regular glues don't always work and i'm going to pop this on and i'm going to twist it so that these so that those prongs line up or do i want to or do i want to no i'm going to do it that way that's a complete change so i can actually see those little ones whereas i couldn't see it i can press because that's got hot glue it's going to melt that a little bit and i can reshape it just a little bit on to there so i'm going to pop that on like that and that is all the decoration we are going to do so i've got myself a sentiment merry christmas and i'm going to pop that on to my card so i think i need a bit of um glue don't i for this let's see okay i was going to try and do that with my 3d glue but i can't find it so I'm going to come in here with my hot glue and hope I can do that. And a little bit behind there. It'll probably actually stick better to here. So we can then just pop that over there. There we go. It's not actually stuck down on that side. Should I pull that? Oh, there you go. That's pulled it just, just just caught it there we go so here we go that's on there and then the final thing i'm going to do is i've got some water um droplet gems and i'm just going to pop if i can pick them up they're not picking up probably because my tweezers are a bit mucky put a couple on to here like this just dotted around the cards just to break up that white space just a little bit so it's very different quite a different look to anything i have done so far but i am absolutely loving it and i think that'll do i think that is it how about that for quite a modern 
but simple take on a Christmas card. There you go. I like that. Hope you do too. So there we go. Um, let me know if you decide to have a go. It doesn't have to be a snowflake. It could be anything you want. And again, this is going to be really easy to adapt to lots of different times of the year. Oh, just do my glue gun. There we go. Right. So thank you for watching. Nice and quick and short and sweet, hopefully. Um, and yeah, let's see what you think. So please don't forget to click on the links. Um, as always, please leave a comment during the show or during the video rather to let me know what you think. If it's a technique you've tried before, um, what you think of that technique, what you think of the finished look. It really is quite a clean and simple look on here. And uh, yeah, and I will um, be back with another tutorial don't forget to subscribe just up here or click on any of the other links and i will see you all very soon bye for now